level of training. But CrossFit also does a lot of great for a lot of people, and especially a lot of people with disabilities. And we were talking before this, and you train someone who has several palsy. And I know it's very near and dear to your heart. And it's also a great success story of what CrossFit can do for someone who's kind of facing a struggle like that. And uh, yeah. doesn't really feel like they can have a life where they can exercise and be healthy like that. So I, I, I hope that some, this, this story you're about to tell will kind of reach someone who maybe is, has a disability and is like, oh, well, maybe I can't bench and squat like I see the meatheads at the gym doing whatever you want to say. And, uh, but maybe I could do something like step box step ups or maybe some adaptive things that you kind of put together for. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's one of like CrossFit is scary based on the competitive side where you can get rabdo, but one of the <laughs> best sides of it is that it's designed to be a functional um, fitness workout, right? So like functional meaning this is going to help translate into your everyday life. And I fortunately got the opportunity to meet up with and train, um, her name's Danny, uh, and she has cerebral palsy. And when she first came to me, she was super motivated. And like, I can't take that and say that that's not, that's the only reason why she got better was really, she was just self-motivated, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm not going to take any credit for her because she came to me, she was motivated to get better and she has a goal and that's to walk. And um, cerebral palsy, is it basically your neurons in your brain aren't functioning right. So you can't, your brain is telling you to do something, but your body can't do it essentially. Right. So she could walk, but her brain's saying no, right? So she's got to tr treat her body and her brain like simultaneously. For you and I, we can reach and grab a glass of water, but not everybody can do that, right? We can do it without thinking, but she's got to be like, all right, I got to reach and grab this and lift it up. Mm -hmm. So when she came to me, everything was, um, in a sense, like slower, right? Like, all right, we're going to do leg lifts, but we could only do one leg at a time. And then towards the end of our training sessions, like she would be able to lift both legs at a time and lift them up over something, um, mm -hmm. take one step, then two steps, then take two steps without any help. Right. Like, so it was like, we were gradually getting better. Um, and it just was so eye-opening that like this sport, CrossFit, when you think of it as a sport, you think of like the rhabdo and the scary sides, but like this sport is also helping people reach goals like Danny, where she's trying to learn to walk. And it's just so cool to see that something this high level can be brought down to somebody with a goal as simple as just taking the first step. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was really neat to see. Like it often does a good job, that story of putting into perspective kind of how we take for granted sometimes like our own health and that it's, it's, it's pretty awesome to see um, like athletes at high levels of that sport. Uh, like, I mean, you have to be very patient. You have to slow down a lot of your training to, to work with her, but I'm sure it was enough, like just an amazing thing to see the progression of what she went through and how she was able to like reach some of the, the goals that to you and I, and um, we take for granted. And that, to me, that was really cool. I wanted to hear about it. But. Yeah. Yep. And like I said, like she was self-motivated. So that kind of like comes back into the mental side of what we mm -hmm. were talking about in terms of sport too. Like she was so self-motivated to get better and she wasn't scared of her failures, which we've talked about a couple of times already. Like she wasn't scared to fall down. And I think that's really important. And her support system, like her parents and her siblings were all like there too. Like, it's okay. If you fall down, like we'll help you back up. You know, mm -hmm. so just try it and see what happens. And I think that's important. Like the only way you're going to get better in anything in life is to take the risks and try what you're bad at and see if you can get better. Yeah. And also, like you said, be willing to fail. I think we also learn a lot from people like Danny or someone in their situation, how positive they can be, especially when you get dealt a pretty rough card, like something like several palsy, like that's not an easy obstacle, but I think it's very telling of sometimes maybe like those things we take for granted, but also just seeing someone who has such a good and positive attitude, like I'm sure that motivated you too, when you were training in your own like quest to go to the CrossFit Games. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, it's funny because I actually told my story about like, oh, I got disqualified and then I went and then I got, I was in the hospital to somebody else today. And 
And he said like, oh, I'm sorry, I feel sad for you. And I was like, don't feel sad for me. You know, like I tried my very best and I tried everything I could and I trained as hard as I could and it just fell short. And like, I feel comfortable saying that I did everything I could and I walked away from it saying that. Like, you know, I missed that season, but it is what it is because I tried my very best and you, you can be happy with that sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like pushing yourself to that limit also puts a lot of the rest of life in perspective. Uh, it makes a lot of other things easier to do when you're, when you can think about the fact that you worked out to the point that you almost poisoned yourself with your own <laughs> abdominal muscles. So I think it makes it easier to like put a lot of other things kind of in perspective. I guess one more question, because I, this is the one I wanted to ask about Rado. Do you ever when working out still kind of think about the fact that like, you could push up against that like limit again. And does it make you like, is it kind of like one of those things where you're like, okay, like let's get close. But let's not do that again. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> like, a thousand, like I, I haven't even done a GHG setup, I think since 2019. Um, I mean, granted I got pregnant, so I, you can't really do that if you have a baby in your belly, but um, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I like it. There's some things that you just have to say, I'm going to wait for that and make sure that I'm ready to come back to that. Um, so I even get sore doing just regular plain old sit-ups nowadays. So mm -hmm. I'm still taking my time, but yeah, stuff that has a lot of reps, um, is definitely scary for me. And they do say that once you get rado once, like you can have more of a risk of getting it again. So wow. I do, I do be a little bit more mindful in my workouts nowadays. I was going to say, you, <laughs> you might, might want to do that. <laughs> But um, no, I was telling you before the podcast, I'm not sure if I've ever had a run in with Rab though, because I'm, but now hearing your story, I'm pretty sure I'm safe that I didn't have it. But <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, but if you've I, ever been sore, like you've ever been sore that you like, you're like, you sit down on the toilet and you're like, ow. Yeah. <laughs> or you walk up the steps, you're like, ow, my legs hurt, right? Yeah. That's, that's like a small case of it. If you got your blood tested, your, your creatinine levels would be high. Mm. So what, uh, so you said that, that after that Minnesota run, like a month later, they think that still played a factor. How long did they tell you you had to kind of be out of commission basically to recover from that rabbit before you were like pretty clear to go back and resume normal activity? They said six weeks. So six, they said six to eight weeks. And I asked the lady and the doctor in France and I was like, okay, but like, could you emphasize six weeks like is it really six weeks or is it like two weeks because you know I can't not work out for six weeks that would just yeah. not work well with my with my life yeah. and she was like nothing she was like go home drink a glass of wine and just do that I was like mm. but like what about yoga she was like nothing do nothing <laughs> so I like I literally couldn't do anything I went for walks and I bought a dog because that's what I did needed <laughs> that something to do <laughs> that, like that was my coping mechanism for not being able to work out for six weeks. So, but yeah. I, I was also a little too scared for it to come back. So yeah, I listened. One more thing I wanted to touch with you on, um, is what do you think that exercise really, cause for, you know, I've been talking about it all the time. What do you think exercise can really do for someone's like mental state or just like mental health? Like for me, like working out, if I go a few days without like doing something in athletic, um, not too many people want to be around me. So what do you think that, uh, <laughs> What do you think it does does for you? Like, we're obviously none of us sitting here are doctors, but what do you think it does for you? Oh uh, no, I, I definitely think that um, for me, exercise is my stress relief, and everybody kind of has their own thing. Like, it might be reading a book, and it might be drinking, having a glass of wine at night, right? That's how you unwind and relax. And um, for me, like my, I'm like you. If I don't get my workout in, then I don't get to release those hormones that make me happy, and I feel like. A miserable person um but i also think that there's an opposite where you could be on the extreme level of that where if you're so frustrated with yourself that you're not getting workouts in like that's a negative right mm -hmm. so all good things are in moderation and find what makes you happy and if your exercise for the day is going for a walk then that's great because you still moved your body and sometimes you have to be okay with that and i'm definitely learning that as a mom because sometimes you just gotta adapt so yeah that's, think, that's also a good sentiment though, because you hit on something that's pretty strong. I feel like not like, I think sometimes CrossFit gets a bad rap too, because you see a lot of people who